in the scripture about our day and, and, and there's some dynamic things, some really good things, really bad things, catastrophic things. And uh, there's things that go beyond our, uh, any explanation. Where did this come from? How did this come to pass? It snuck up on us. Where, where did it begin? We didn't even see it coming. And uh, there's some, some things that uh, the Bible talks about, the miraculous that are going to take place that defy logic. And we've seen that also. Uh, there's some things that uh, if dwelled on, it would keep you up all night. Yet there's other things in the Bible that if you put your mind on, it gives you peace and joy. Uh, there's writing of the past. There's writing of the future. Uh, the book of Revelation gives a, a great unfolding of what we're going to face. And in the end, and then, you know, we, we don't like to see this, but it, it's promoting the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the unveiling of Jesus. So we're excited about that. And, and when we see things come to pass that we don't like, we need to understand that our eyes are not on that. Our eyes are beyond that. that our eyes are on the coming of the Lord. And, and uh, John said, it, even so come, uh, Lord Jesus, and we want him to come. Unfortunately, uh, over the next few weeks, we're, we're not going to look at anything exciting. I, I, I built all that up to say the next few weeks is nothing, it's going to be not exciting. Uh, but God's design for us is not always exciting. I, I wish that every week, every day that we can run the aisles and, and run through the hoops and, you know, tame the walls kind of thing. But um, there, there's some things that... that God has for us that are not so powerfully exciting. Uh, but he does have a plan, and if we want to partake in the exciting thing, uh, promises that God has, and we've got to partake of the, uh, the design that God has for us, and that's so important. Uh, what, what a hope we have, though, and, and to see the end take place, and, and, and if, if we would realize, instead of being scared of what's taking place, that, uh, you know, look at from a different viewpoint the lord's coming and uh not every generation has seen what we're seeing the the early church in the bible they talked about great things and they talked they saw some powerful things but they thought they were in the last days and, and we know we are now in the last days i believe it's our generation and so Overall, we've got to be ready. That's what I'm trying to say. We've got to be ready. Uh, over the next bit, we're, we're going to um, we're going to go internal. Everybody say internal. internal. The external is is what's on the outside. I want to go internal, and I want to talk about an attitude. Everybody say attitude. attitude. Anybody have a bad attitude? Oh, yes. No, we don't. No. Yes. Uh, but I want to talk about the attitude of surrender. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you noticed uh, um, Monday night. I have to turn this down. Monday night in prayer. Is that better? Yes. No. Monday night in prayer, uh, something has taken place. And, and I'm not saying this because the Lord directed me to give us that direction, but um, when we started, uh, and, and oh, we just started a couple weeks ago, and, and when we started, um, even since then, there's been a shift or a change, and I don't like the word shift, but in our prayer meeting, uh, we, we're praying, first of all, for ourselves, and then switching over and praying the same prayer for the church, and, and then the same prayer for the world. Repentance, protective covering, anointing, revelation, the will of God be done, and blessing. But the longer, and, and here's the shift or the change in two weeks. And we're going to see it a greater shift over the weeks. Um, and I'm not promoting a Monday night prayer meeting, but it's so so powerful. I, I noticed that that the longer we delve in this prayer style, uh, what you're going to see more prominently is the focus is going to be on self. Like when we started, you know, when I prayed this prayer before I showed it to anybody. I was able to go through all three, self, church, and, and world, in an hour. And the first night, I got to self and church and, and just a little bit of the world. Monday, 
I barely got through cell. And then skimmed through, no offense, but kind of covered the church a little. But most of the focus was on cell. And that's the in, each internal part I want to talk about. We need to pray for the body. And we also need to pray for the laws. But focus is turning into and turning towards self. Now, it's not self-interest because we're not praying self-interest things. We're not praying for ourselves to be blessed, uh, uh, unhonored, and, and recognized, and, and uh, you know, God pouring out so much on us. We're actually going the opposite way. We're repenting. And uh, we're, we're, we're asking God to cover us because we, we realize we need a covering. We're talking to God about an anointing and, and we need that anointing. So, uh, and, and I'm not saying don't pray for the church, don't pray for the, the world, but uh, you're going to notice that more time is going to be spent on praying for self. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and if, if we do that, everything else will take care of itself or the Lord will take care of it. If we, ever say we, we, if we repent, if we are covered, if we are anointed, if we receive revelation, if we are concerned about God's will being done, what does that do to the mind of God? It, it, it really, really changes us. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, and, and very familiar portion of Scripture, uh, the writer said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and then heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be opened, my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. The Lord was speaking to the nation of Israel, his people, uh, not because they were in a hard situation. You know what it's like, you, you get in a situation you can't get out of and you can pray through, right? And you hear from God and God gives you direction. These people were not in a situation where they couldn't get out of. These people were in a place uh, that, that they just built the temple and they just dedicated it to God. And they just got through a powerful Sunday morning, Sunday night service. They had a Holy Ghost rally without the Holy Ghost, right? And so they were just coming out of that. So, so here it is, just imagine a, a powerful camp meeting or a conference meeting and, and, and you come out of that and you're just, you're, you're riding on cloud nine and a half, if you, so to speak. And, and, and this is a time when God spoke to them and said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. You see, they were in a position where God recognized what they did for him. The sacrifice of the animals that they brought to the temple, the sacrifice of the, of the food and, and their energy and, and all their expenses and, and people gathered together and, and, and all for the sake of worshiping God in the building. Tremendous. And so God saw that and it pleased him and his response was, yeah, the, the anointing was there because the Bible says the ministers could not stand and minister. So the powerful move of God in the service. And, and there's not, that, that's exciting, that's awesome. But here's where the real, real response from God comes. You went through that, you, all the excitement and joy and thrill, and now God speaks, if my people, they're called by my name. If they humble themselves and they'll pray. And then he said, I will hear. That it's then I'm gonna hear. Mm -hmm. He didn't say when they when they gather 13 cows together or when they gather together in a room and, and bring out the festivities and the fireworks. He said, No, that was all good for that. But I'm telling you now, this is what I want. If my people shall humble themselves and pray, look for me. Amen. And and then turn from their wicked ways. And then he said, I'm going to hear from heaven. And then I will forgive their sin. And then I will heal their land. When we go back to the prayer, repentance, and, and I'm not comparing uh, the prayer meeting Monday to this, yet I am. Our repentance is when we are humbling ourselves 
And we're praying and we're seeking God. When we talk to God about protective covering and anointing, we're seeking his face. Amen. And, and, and when we begin to pray and, and do these things, then God is going to hear us. See, we take care of self. And God says, when you take care of self, then I'm going to start moving on the land. If I can put it into our vernacular, our, our, our uh, language, he said, if you'll take care of yourself, then I'm going to move in the midst of your city what you're praying for. I'm going to begin to heal the people around you. See, we're not dealing with land now. We're not dealing with mountains and valleys and fields and streams. We are dealing with people and souls. And God says, if you will humble yourselves and pray and turn from your wicked ways and seek my face, then I'm going to hear you. And then I'm going to hear you. And then I'm going to heal all around. So the Lord was responding in, in his pleasure. God doesn't change. And he's, he, with time, what brings him pleasure in the Old Testament still brings him pleasure today. Although the Old Testament, they had chariots and horses, they didn't have cars and trucks, and they didn't have buildings like this. And, amen. But what brings his attention uh, to in Bible days still brings to attention today. That's right. And, and I want you to notice, or I want us to notice that in in Second Chronicles, the key there's a key phrase, and the key phrase is this: "If my." Well, I was talking today uh, about people and, and uh, you know, God created us from the dust of the ground, breathed into us the breath of life, and we became a living creature. We became like him. We have a choice. So it's not that you have to pray. It's not that you have to serve God. You've got this choice. That's right. And so the Lord is speaking to his people saying, if you pray. Now, when I read that scripture, if my people, then I will. If my people don't, I can just use a mathematical equation. If my people don't, then I won't. Everybody wants God to answer prayer their way. Everybody wants God to minister to them how they want it done. But not everybody is going to be part of this if my people. So the key phrase here is if. So this places the onus uh, not on the Spirit of God moving, but the onus now is placed on our shoulders, on mankind. If I don't do it, God's not going to answer prayer. If I do do it, the promise is I will be there. That's right. We take that scripture when the Lord says, I'll be with you, I'll be even to the end of the world. We take that for granted. Well, doesn't matter what I do, God's going to be with me. No. That's only if you line up with his will and his desire. God's going to draw close to me because he loves everybody. No, he's only going to draw close to you when you draw close to him. So if my people that are called by my name, that description does not only fill the identification of Israel, it also should fill the identification of every Holy Ghost filled apostolic uh, living child of God, that we are his people. Not because I say I'm his people, but because I am his people. There's a big difference because I say, and this is what's going on in the schools, this is what's going on in the world. I want to identify as something I'm not. I, I, I think I'm a woman, so I've got a right to identify as a woman, but I'm not. And they think they've got the right that everybody around should identify them as what they want. But that's not true. And so I, I, I can say I identify as, as a millionaire, but I can't go to the bank and get a million dollars. But we laugh at that, but we identify, and this is what the world does, yeah. it identifies as Christians. Right. And that's what happens in the church. People identify as apostolics, but they're not. They identify as being led of the Holy Ghost, but they're not. They identify as being sincere, but they're sincerely wrong. 
So when, when the writers say, the Lord said, if my people, we've got to identify first as his people. And if these people, us, would humble ourselves. Now, everybody likes excitement, don't I like excitement. If I knew that protest, I might have driven down there just to check there, you know, back away so I can see from a distance so I can get out of there. <laughs> everybody loves the pomp and pageantry. But tonight, there's none. It's going to be the opposite. And we're going to be talking about surrender. And to the flesh, let me say to the flesh. When you surrender, it's giving up. It is. I surrender my will to my wife. It means I give up. It's true. To God. If I surrender my life to God, and we sang the song, I surrender all. The kingdoms of my heart. What kind of kingdoms are in my heart? There's tons of them. There's, there's my, my, my regular life. If I have a regular life, there's, there, there's the things I own, the things that I associate with. There's, there's my, my thinking, the way I do my attitude, and, and, and all these things. Am I surrendering at all, or am I singing a song? That's it. Now, not one of us surrenders everything we think we do. That's why we, we repent every day. Yeah. To your flesh, it's giving yourself over to. To your flesh, it's admitting defeat. How many like to admit when they're wrong? You don't like it. I have many arguments. <laughs> and I know you're wrong. <laughs> to surrender means to yield power control or possession of another upon a compulsion or a demand. To give up completely or agree to forego, especially in favor of somebody else. To give up into power of another, especially as a prisoner. So I give up. That, that's why in war they put their hands in there. You know why they put their hands? It's a sign of surrender. I, I'm, I'm giving up. I'm waving the flag. See, when my hands are up in the air, I can't fight. I can't grab a knife in my belt. I can't, I can't grab a gun in my, in, you know, on my body and shoot whoever it is I'm surrendering to. So your hands are up in the air, and, and you're, in a, you're in a weakened, vulnerable position when your hands are up in the air walking. And, and so that's a surrender. It's five times Paul said uh, about being a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and he said, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. A synonym to surrender is relinquish. It means to withdraw or retreat from or leave behind. So when, when I relinquish my will, I leave my will behind. When I relinquish my will, I, I, I put it aside. I retreat, I withdraw from it. See, there's times when, when we will relinquish our spirit, our control, but we don't walk away from it. We stand and we guard it because we want to pick it up as soon as the opportunity gives us. It means to give up, to stop holding, release it. It's not always easy. Another synonym is the word submission. And submission means to resist no longer, to, to give way, to yield to authority. That's hard. To be subject to somebody else. Everybody, I don't care who we are, we have to be subject to somebody. Okay, in the church, we're subject to the church, we're subject to the pastor, pastor's subject to the people, subject to the board, subject to the district, subject, and we're always, because it's a protective thing that God gave us. But our flesh says, I don't want to submit myself, I don't want to subject myself, I don't want to relinquish my control. The judge told Samuel, Samuel told Saul, uh, the king of the nation, he said, to obey, is better than sacrifice. Bring me a thousand head of cattle 
No, to obey is better. And God is not looking for, for our means. He's looking for our sacrifice. Right. Or, or, sorry, our obedience, our the sacrifice of ourself, yes. See, there, there's, there's power with God in our submission. There's, there's power when we surrender ourselves. There's, there's power when we submit our lives. And James, uh, or Paul wrote that we are to submit to each other. He said to wives, submit to your husbands. Mm-hmm. And he said to submit to those who have rule over you. Don't tell me what to do. But the Bible says honor them that who have rule over you. Give double honor to those people. We don't like that. Oh. I don't like what he's telling me all the time. Straight now. James wrote about submitting ourselves to God. Peter wrote uh, that we're to submit to the ordinances of men. Uh, he, he wrote that the younger are to submit themselves to the older. In his letter to the church, the Apostle Peter wrote for us to grow in Jesus. Now remember, he, he's writing to the church that's saved. He's not writing to, to, to uh, outsiders or worldly people. He said, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, so he said, grow in grace and also in the knowledge. If I want to grow in my flesh, what do I do? Eat naturally. I eat, yeah. right? I eat. I add to the flesh. If I want to grow in my finances, I've got to find a way to add finances to my piggy bank. Whether it's paying out less or getting a side job or, or, or increase my income, that's the only way I can increase financially. And that's fine for the flesh and finances, but if I want to grow in my spirit, let me say my spirit. My spirit. I must follow the principles that God says laid out in Scripture for us to follow. We tell our kids, eat your broccoli because it's good for you. Good for you. Eat your eat your all your meal because we want you to grow. The, the ordinances are there. The, the the facilities are there. The the principle is there spiritually. The Bible contains. It holds the principles. You see, the Bible says, "I must decrease. I must lessen. I must deny myself. I must surrender." Only if, again, back to the if, I want this relationship, if I want a deep relationship, if I want to, if I want to follow the plan that God has for me and the church. And, and again, I said this last week or a couple weeks ago, it does the church no good if only one person does this. It's got to be the body surrendering. It's got to be the body working together in one accord, in one place, in one, one place, in one accord, surrendering ourselves to God. Then we create in the church, we see in the church. In the church. In the church, we create this attitude of surrendering and submitting to God. And if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, then I'm going to move. So if we want God to move on our church, in our church, then we've all got to pull together in one spirit and do what God's telling us to do, to surrender it all to him. Making sense? So I've got to decrease, I've got to surrender, and that's the only way for me, and it's the only way for the church to grow in, in Jesus. Submission and surrender, they're the core of repentance. And, and the first act of man allowing God to have his way in our lives is the repentance. Turning from what we want, even to what he wants, that's repentance. Mm -hmm. Turning from our way to his way, that's repentance. Now, I, I, and you made me think, well, I'm in the church. I've heard this, and I've done this. I've repented. I, I got the Holy Ghost. I'm an apostolic, whatever. Mm -hmm. But go back in the Old Testament. When Moses submitted himself to God, God was able not just to deliver Moses, 
But the entire nation of Israel was delivered because Moses submitted himself to God. David, a man after God's heart, failed. Yet when he surrendered his life, Lord, you've given me choices of what's going to happen to me, but I'm not the man to choose. Lord, whatever you want to be done, let it be done. Paul said, I die every day. And we're still seeing the results of Paul's preaching. Most of the New Testament was by, written by Paul. And most of our teaching and the preaching about living for God is done through the words of Paul. He didn't know that. He's in prison writing. He's, he's talking to these people that he brought, these churches that he started and, and other people. He didn't have any clue that we'll be reading his words. Yeah. Had no idea. Jesus himself submitted to the cross to give you and I the opportunity to be free from sin and we're taken advantage of it. If any of these men, and there's many more in the Bible, but if any of these did not submit, everything would be so different. The outcome would be so different than it came. The concept of surrender is contrary to the way the world is. And that's why we fight it. Because, believe it or not, every one of us is in the world. Amen. We're affected by the world. We, we work in the world. We live in the world. We're, we're operating by the world standard. We, we go to the stores. We go to the bank. We do all these things that the world does. So we're inundated with worldly ways and attitudes of, on social media and, and, and books and, and whatever we're doing, it's, it's all affecting us. Sure. So it's contrary, submission is contrary to what the way the world is, but it's also contrary to the nature of our flesh. Mm -hmm. If you want to cause people to be excited, teach on leadership. You're the next leader. If you want people to be happy, call them a leader. If you want people to be saved, then you've got to teach them how to surrender and submit and be humble. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to hear that they're in charge of everything. Because yeah. it goes to the yeah. head. Oh, well, look who I am. And there's some people you give them an office, and they run well with that office. Other people, you give them the office, and they run with it, and they blow everything apart. Right, right. right? We all know both scenarios. Yeah. Matthew 18, verse 1. The disciples came to Jesus saying, who, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Even the, even the disciples were like this. Oh, Oh, Lord, who's the greatest? They go, oh, it's me. Oh, it's John. Oh, you know, we're, you know, we're going to stand beside you. We're, 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 we're with Jesus. <laughs> and they call it a little child. You talk about, you know, bursting their bubble. Call a little child to him and set him in the midst of them. He said, verily, I say to you, except you be converted and be as little children, you should not enter into the kingdom. He's not even talking about leadership here. Yeah. Who is the greatest? Lord, who is the greatest? If you don't become like him, you're not even going to get in, let alone be the greatest. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. A little child knows nothing, is in control of nothing, has no thought of anything. A little child doesn't care about limelight and, and, and pats on the back and you did a great job and uh, uh, you know all that stuff. He just, hey, where's food? That's all. The Lord ha has, has a, a great plan, but it's not just for the church, it's for individuals that make up this church. And so to follow him, there's got to be complete surrender. There's no fences to straddle in surrender. And we know people, and we've done it ourselves. Hallelujah. Straddle fences. Yeah. It's got to be everything or nothing. 
I, I had this thing, I'm gonna read it Sunday morning. And I should have brought it with me to read it tonight. I, I, I won't even try to figure it out. You see, half with surrender, half-heartedness is not an option. Because it's an attitude. Surrender is an attitude. Uh, it, it's not me, it's not my, my ministry, it's not my doings, it's not my ability, it, it's my attitude. It, it's surrendering to, to the one who leads me where I go. See, if I'm not following him today, or, or let's say I slip and I do my own thing, well, I gotta find his footsteps again, find out where he went. I don't know if you ever read any, any uh, old Western books, Louis L'Amour books, you know, where, where the trackers, you know, they, they, they're tracking somebody and, and I'm reading one right now, they track and, and all of a sudden they lose the tracks and they spend hours looking all around every direction and they find a scrape on a rock and, and, and that gets them on track, but they lost hours. That's what happens to us. When we, when we don't surrender, even for, I, I'm not saying the same time frame, but a day or a moment, we, we, we stop surrendering, not, not intentionally, but it just comes off us, doesn't it? Yeah. You don't get up in the morning and say, oh, I'm not going to surrender today. No, it's, that's too blatant. That's like the devil is not going to come at you. So, so then you got to go, well, okay, where, okay, God, where did you go? And you're praying, oh God, where did you go? What, what, what's my step, Lord? I gotta find you. And, and you try to you get back on track, but you've lost that moment. You've lost that time. And who knows what else you lost, you'll never get back. Right. Because in that time frame, Lord may have spoken. And you didn't hear. That's right. Surrendering to the one who directs lives even outside, that they can cross our path. So he can direct our neighbor to, to be in a situation and, and then come to me for advice or, or whatever. Right. Be open to hurting and open talk or whatever it is. But if we're not surrendering, that, that eliminates that stuff. Paul, when he was writing to the church of Philippi, he wrote, he said, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Now that's verse five. And when, when he wrote this, uh, the specific scripture he was commanding the reader to have a mindset. Let me say a mindset. Mind. Mind. To establish in their mind a certain spirit or a certain attitude. This is what he said. Let this mind be in you, the same one that was in Jesus. The, to propose or to determine to have a right frame of mind. I'm going to make up my mind that I will have the same mindset. And this is what we have to do. I'm going to have the same mindset as the Lord. And so what was he referring to? We've got to go backwards here. In, in verse 1, he said, If there therefore be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, any fellowship with the Spirit, any bowels of mercy. The word consolation means comfort. It means solace. So if there be any comfort or solace in Jesus. If there be any comfort in, in your love, in, in your fellowship, uh, this, is, this is the way. This is what he's saying. If you want the comfort, how many want the comfort? The Spirit. Watch, watch. Fulfill my joy. If we want comfort and solace in Christ, we've got to fulfill his joy. In other words, do, do whatever it is to make him happy. Right? You understand what I'm saying? He said, if you want this solace, this comfort of love and fellowship, he said, let this mindset fulfill the joy of the Lord. That you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. In other words, having a submissive heart, mindset, a, a, a humble, that's what it's saying, don't look at yourself anymore. Okay. This is the mindset of Jesus. And if you want to uh, have this solace and peace and comfort in what he has, here's how you do it. 
What did he tell the children of Israel? If my people, if they want their land healed, if they want me to hear them, if they want solace of the Lord, if they want the comfort of the Lord, if my people want that, then they need to humble themselves and pray. Mm -hmm. Same thing, fulfilling the will of God, fulfilling, fulfilling the joy of this is what makes God happy. He, it doesn't make him happy when you clap. We need to clap our hands. We need to outwardly worship. We need to praise him. We need to sing unto him. But if you really want to make God happy, then humble yourself. That's right. He establishes the foundation of success in the inward. Remember I said we're going to talk about the inward? See, our success is not the world's success where everybody can take notice and clap you on the back and say, you did a job well done. You, 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 you know, you, you, you did this real good. You did that real good and clap, clap, clap. Everybody sees. <laughs> but our spiritual success is much different. It's found in the unseen hand. It's found somewhere where mankind cannot see it, but God sees your attitude. He searches the heart. He's not looking at the outward appearance. The outward appearance is a reflection of what's inside. He's not wasting his time, if God can waste time. He's not wasting his time on the outside. He's going to the source, what's on the inside. Here's our success. Everybody want to be successful? This I say then, walk in the spirit. You should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you're led of the spirit, you're not under the law. That's your success. Galatians 5.22, your success is the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, love, suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Those are contrary to your flesh. Meekness, temperance, against such as no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we, oh, here we go. Here's another hint. Here's another key phrase. If we, let me say, if we. If we. If we live in the spirit, don't have to. But if we do, let's also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, and they one another. It's not the fireworks kind of deal. It's not the, you know, the applause of man. It's not, it's not people coming to hear you sing or whatever. It, it, it's not the let's have a party and celebrate our promotion. Amen. It, it's, it, it's the Lord looking on us and saying, well done, thy good and faithful servant. It's the Lord saying, I am pleased. It's the Lord responding and saying, I see that you're humbling yourself, and I see that you're praying. I see you're seeking my face. I see what you're doing. I see on the inside the attitude. I see your spirit, and because of this, I am going to bless you. I'm going to move on your lives. I'm going to move on your church. I'm going to start to heal your land. We pray for uh, uh, almost two year, year and a half, uh, uh, casting out devils and casting out uh, spirits and praying over our city. Well done. Now it's time to look inward and say, Lord, we've done that stuff. Now let's take care of us. According to the plan, not my plan, not your plan, but the plan and design of the Holy One, it's His success story. It's about him. If you want to be successful in the world, in the banking world, you go to school and you go to university and you get an education in banking. If you want to become a welder, be a, a professional welder, go to school and become a welder. If you want to be successful in the kingdom of God, here with the Spirit is telling us how to be successful.